As the Syrian civil war continues into its 19th month, few Western journalists have been given permission to cover the conflict on the ground. Journalist Janine Di Giovanni is a rare exception. She was allowed three visits so far this year, and most recently was allowed to visit the city of Homs, where she captured footage of the devastated city. Janine, you've had the opportunity to now visit with Syrian soldiers who have been battling in this 19-month civil war. What's their morale? How are they feeling? I think that they're, they're very positive, they're very gung-ho, they feel they are winning, uh, they feel they are doing it Thank for you. a cause they believe in, which always helps with morale, but they're very tired. They're, they're in homes particularly, they're fighting an urban battle, which is um, literally uh, going house to house. Take us through your journey. You weren't able to just walk down the street because there were snipers on the rooftops. How did you actually navigate this warren that you describe of devastation? Well, we would go building by building, and in most of the buildings, they have punched through or cut through holes, which are called mouse holes, which they can crawl through to get from one spot to the other without actually having to be on the street, or else put up uh, impromptu bridges, which is planks going over shattered windows, because in this particular area of Homs, there are snipers uh, um, everywhere. So they have to prevent themselves from being seen. And the way to do that is to stay inside each building. So you come through one of these mouse holes, and what do you see? You said there was a courtyard that looked like it was a makeshift clinic at one point? It looked like a makeshift clinic. I was with a government official, Ministry of Information official, who told me that it had been also been used as a place where the rebels had tortured government soldiers, and she showed me a rusted hook, um, which was hanging from the ceiling. Whether or not this is true or not, I have no way of proving. She also showed me uh, what looked like a well, a kind of hole in the ground where she said many bodies had been pulled up. When I asked how many, they didn't know. But it was clear that the government troops had taken this building in a hurry because um, they had cleared out of it. The rebels had cleared out very quickly. So you come through this space, and what's the mission? What are these soldiers that you're with representing President Bashar al-Assad's forces, what are they trying to do? What's their mission this day? Well, they believe they're defending their country. I mean, when they began to sing for me, it was God and Syria. The Ministry of Information um, young woman who was with me was incredibly lenient. Um, when soldiers wouldn't want to talk, she would say, tell, tell her what it's like, tell her what it's really like. I think in many ways, when, whenever you're fighting a guerrilla war, the rebels have the advantage. They're on their own territory. They know, they know the ground very well. Remember that a lot of these guys I was with aren't from Homs. They're from Aleppo, they're from Damascus, they're from other parts of the country. And slowly, as one of the soldiers said to me, it's like a cat and mouse game. They hit back at us. They keep shooting at us. If it is a David and Goliath type war, then David is taunting Goliath, um, you know, little by little wearing them down.